Thank you for joining us here today and for watching this video. We appreciate your time. I want to begin by walking you through our approach. Our team went into the Klong Toy Slum in Thailand and did extensive market research through surveys and on the ground observational research. We tried to identify what early childhood education was needed and where the gaps were and then developed content that would fill those needs and created the best deployment system to get it to where it was needed most. I do want to mention that all the photos you see in the slide deck today were taken by us while in the slum. This is Juan. Juan and I were born about the same time. But while Juan's parents couldn't get him the education he needed, my parents weren't worried about my education as I grew up. Why? Did Juan's parents love him any less? Did my parents love me any more? Did your parents love you any differently? Research tells us that on the day a child is born, the majority of their future is already dictated to them, depending on the socioeconomic class and the location they're born in. Juan's parents loved and cared for him just as much as any child's parents could. But they didn't have the access to the necessary early childhood education tools that were needed that I was afforded. Nor did they have the understanding of how critical that period is in a child's growth. For our pilot, We've been doing our research in the Klong Toy Slum, and we'll be launching it in the next two months. We worked with children, parents, schools, and community centers in preparation for our work. And one of the interesting things we found out is more than half the parents and caretakers already have a smartphone, and that number is growing exponentially. We also found that about half of those gave access of their phone to their children. A majority of those parents felt that one of the necessary things was language, both Thai and English. And of the parents that had children at least seven years old, half of those felt that their children were not ready by the time they had entered school. Based on the market research that we completed, we identified a specific list of content requirements that we knew our solution had to have. We knew that it had to be fun. We knew the kids need to explore, have cognitive development, hand-eye hand -eye coordination, and language skills. We also knew that we had to utilize the existing infrastructure. My colleague mentioned that Smartphone penetration rates are quite high, but we did need to take into account that every time they downloaded something on their phone, they were paying in charges for the media that they were downloading. We also knew we had to utilize partnerships within the community. These things were crucial for the solution. So our solution comes in two parts. The first part is an interactive mobile application. We're really excited about it because it's just finished and it's ready to be taken to the market for testing. It's called I Love to Explore. I Love to Explore has two user interfaces, one for the kids and one for the parents. The kids user interface is a game. In the game, the kids uncover animals through leaves and clouds, then they decorate them with crowns and funny sunglasses. The name of the animal is also written underneath it in their native language as well as in English, and there's also audio so they hear it in both languages as well. This, this covers a lot of the basis of our content requirements. The parents interface lets them track their children and see which areas they're doing well and which areas they're not doing so well and so they can help them improve. In the parent interface, it also sends them daily messages, things like, Reading to your kids for 15 minutes a day can increase their lifespan, or singing to your kids for 10 minutes before they fall asleep at night can increase their creativity. All of these things combined make a really great app that we're really excited about. But we also know that one app is not enough 
to bridge the gap. One app is not enough to be the solution to this problem. So the second part of our solution. We aim to have an interactive digital library of content that will be accessible through our booths that we like to call a tree of knowledge. Now the interactive library of content hosts other apps. Of course, it will host our flagship application as well. The other apps that we hope host, we will require a high level of quality as well as proven results. We aim to be the certification for kids' educational apps, a place where parents can go and trust what they're downloading is a high quality content. So, the booth will be situated in the heart of the urban slums. When parents come near the booth, the technology inside sends an automatic push notification saying, would you like to download this app? All they have to do is say yes. When they go back home with their smartphone, they've got the app downloaded. They can play with their kids whenever they'd like. When they come back to the booth, it uploads the usage information. That way we can track how well it's actually working for the kids. You can also see on the booth that there are seats around it. This is so kids can sit and play together. There are user interface screens too. And this allows kids whose parents don't have smartphones to be able to have access to this. So this isn't only a means of communicating the solution to the parents and providing a place for the kids to play, it's also creating a new heart of the community and a place where the discussion for early childhood education begins, where parents share information and kids play together, and early childhood education is actually being addressed in the urban slums. After deciding on our concept, we decided that the quickest route to market would be through partnerships. That is why, for the educational app, we are working together with an app developer, SmartTots, focused on childhood education. They have a retention rate of over 81% on their apps. For the booth, we are partnering with FabLab of Tongshi University and Zijiexia to finalize the design and build the actual structure. And to create a marketing buzz, we are working together with Gmobi, which is an Android platform that can help push our app to over 50 million phones throughout Asia. And we will provide the booth and the app for free to the communities in the slums. And we will still be able to make sustainable revenue because we have four direct revenue streams identified. First off, we will sell the app through app stores to the general public. Then we will sell the booth to educational, uh, educational institutions outside of the slums. Furthermore, we will charge a hosting fee to app developers that want to push our, their app onto our booth. And last but not least, we will provide advertising space on the booth structure itself. We are already close to signing our first advertising. When we start gathering the information, we will have an indirect revenue stream over, over time, which is created by big data. Now, during our first year, we will start, as mentioned, with a pilot in the Klangtoy slum. We've already selected three potential partners with whom we can start this pilot. By starting the pilot, we will be able to directly reach over 2,000 children in the Thai slum. Now, after the pilot, we will start redeveloping the app and tweaking the booth to make it able to scale it throughout Thailand, reaching over a million children at the end of year one. We are currently facing two challenges, which is finalizing the technology to send and gather the information, and the second one is to translate the app to be able to scale outside of Thailand. And that is why we are currently seeking this investment from you. For our five-year plan and scaling up, we're shooting to have 50 great early childhood education apps in the booths. Now these might be partners such as EF with language or something like Sesame Street. We're not sure yet, but we know we'll start with our app and add content that really truly gets at the heart of ECD. We'll have over 12,000 booths on the ground within a five year period, serving well over 10 million zero to six year old children living in the slums. But it begins with one. One app 
in one booth, in one slum. We have a great team here. We have a great idea. And we're excited to help the people that we've been working with. You know, when I was a child, I had a tree of learning. It was the Boulder Public Library, and it was right down the street from my house. This is Juan today. Juan is 30 and has children of his own. And the question is, will his children have access to the education they need, or will they be stuck in the same cycle he is? Help us bring them their own tree of learning. Help us by building them a booth. Thank you. Hi, thank you for joining us today and watching this video. Hi! I was like, hey, hey, hi. My name is Nicholas Drusilli Thomas. I like hobbies, horses. <laughs>